Popcorn Blaze! If you were played with nerve-dwelling encounters and delusions with a newborn baby inside an abandoned farmhouse, what would you do? We'll break down all the nasty twists and life-changing realizations in Abandon. Booyah! Sarah and Alex, a newlywed couple, come with their newborn boy, Liam, in an old farmhouse in the woods, far away from the bustle of downtown. Bombastic side eye. They appear to be moving out from city life, and the old farmhouse immediately appears to be the perfect option, as they tell Cindy, the broker who has been showing them over. Sarah appears to be strained to cope with her constantly wailing infant, and at moments appears remote from the entire conversation, rarely saying anything. Alice compensates for her quietness by walking around the land, which consists of a large house in a stable, and expressing his fondness for it. Finally, as the purchase nears completion, Sarah asks Cindy why this property hasn't had anybody occupying it for quite some time, to which Cindy candidly admits that there was some terrible tragedy in it a long time ago. Typical horror story entry, am I right guys? While Alice casually states that they would rather not know, haha <laughs> Alex, Sarah asserts that they do, and Cindy discloses that a girl committed suicide in the home shortly after murdering her baby and dad. Cindy then offers them a rap document and predicts that the couple, as the elders before them, will certainly bypass the property in question. Sarah, on the other hand, says they are determined to purchase it and even assures her husband that she wouldn't mind a little scaring if there were so. Bruh, why? When the family moves into their new home, their greatest concern becomes clear. Sarah is struggling with postpartum depression and unstable psychosis, which is why she has been seeking medical treatment. Alex emphasizes that their relatively basic living nearer to the natural world and away from crowds of people may be just what Sarah requires to recuperate. Sarah's greatest challenge is being near to her baby son, who does not seem to want to be nursed and prefers breast milk from his bottle, and she is unsure how to overcome this. As expected, we have a cliche start, a family out of nowhere moving out and choosing the creepiest abandoned house there is. It's like digging your own grave. Here we have a newborn baby and a couple, Sarah and Alex. Since Sarah has postpartum depression, they decided to take a break from the city, but for goodness sake, I don't get why they chose a house that went straight out of a black and white movie. If I'm Sarah, except that I'm with sanity, no, no, plainly no, I have a newborn baby and I'm suffering from postpartum depression. Why would I even live in some abandoned and clearly haunted house? And the fact that other buyers before me has returned, it is enough for me to believe that I will not heal here. Girl, I'm not so masochist. Why offer me this abandoned house? If I really want to have some air away from the city, I'd rather live in a barn than this. <laughs> I'd be like that, you know? So the alternative way for that is obviously rejecting that offer. Anyway, may I just share how I laughed at the audacity and nerve of Miss Cindy to disclose the history of this house. It's actually funny that a broker would tell the cons of this property. While other sales agents are, oh, buy this house, it has a cozy terrace and fully furnished living room. Cindy was like, bitch, here's the tea. Some mother father recently died here and guess what? It's suicide. Would you like to look at it? I'm sure she's low key like, okay, I've done my part. Only dummies will buy this house anyway. Don't come crawling to me after this. But apparently she had the right prospects because Sarah and Alex blindly bought it. <laughs> Bro, what? Apparently Sarah wouldn't mind a little haunting. Is she possessed or something? And Alex only agreed with her? Excuse me, I'm out of here. <laughs> the couple discovered a locked space in the newly acquired residence, which they unlocked to discover is a bedroom for a kid, most likely the girls. Sarah additionally examines Cindy's papers and reads concerning the incident, a young lady, Anna, used to reside in a property with her dad, Robert, whom she killed alongside her own newborn baby before committing suicide some 40 years ago. Soon after they move there, a solemn looking man presents himself as their next door neighbor named Renner. Yeah, that's pretty sus. He explains that not just Anna and Robert were present at the moment of the occurrence, but also Anna's brother and Robert's kid. Sarah soon discovers her outward resemblance to Anna as she goes through old pictures in their home along with Renner's statements. About the exact same time, she appears to see young Anna's spirit. Sarah tries everything she can to make her infant feel at ease with her using handmade dolls and a variety of things, but none is working. 
Sarah had discovered a small hardwood musical box item, most likely from Anna, alongside the old photos that were intrigued by it. The item has an identical impact on infant Liam, who listens to it intently but begins crying immediately the instant his mother closes the lid. While Alex is away on job responsibilities, caring for farm animals throughout the countryside, Sarah devotes time alone in her home and slowly begins to hear noises of children sprinting around and giggling within the locked up space that was one time Anna's. One of the cons of buying already built houses is the fact that you won't know if there's a secret passage or if there are other people living there. I don't know if it's just me, but this is not a smart choice for the couple. I mean, as soon as they moved, Sarah had sent a lot of negative ambience, but instead of worrying for her and her child's safety, she chose to feel intrigued. My point is that, so what if you have a resemblance with a person who used to live there? Isn't that just plain terrible to get yourself involved in the past case? Not to mention that there are like three people who died? Is Sarah not aware that she is getting herself in trouble? And Renner, he just suddenly existed in this movie to feed Sarah's curiosity. Man, I know what you're up to. Let's point out the bullets that we learned so far. So we just bought an abandoned home with a dark history of suicide and murder. In that house, you can sometimes hear the giggles of children even though you're all alone with your baby. And nothing scary, right? Probably the one that's most clueless on what's happening is Alex though, as he's so busy earning. To overcome their problem, the alternative solution that I can think of is to redecorate that smugly looking house. Damn, it's too dark in there. I doubt if there's even enough air inside. If Sarah really wanted to heal from depression, she should change some basic curtains and change the spots of furniture or something. I mean, she could hire me. I'd play some good jazz music there for real. A lot of things could have worked, and if she suddenly encounters ghosts, then go out with Liam and call for help. But just to clarify, if I'm Sarah and I already had no choice but to live there, I did definitely ignore the bad feelings that are around me, but I won't ignore the bad signs. For instance, the fact that I learned from Cindy's papers that the case was no joke, isn't it better to discuss this to Alex and see what they can do? Also, Renov should have just told me some features or literally anything I don't know about the place, basically to atmosphere. That way, I learn more about the house and I would be rational, but more sensibly. Sarah should mind the fact that the baby doesn't like it there. That should have been her priority. Liam doesn't even feel safe around Sarah, so why should she even worsen it and put him in a scary place randomly? If I was Liam, I'd throw a tantrum in that instant. I mean, why would you trust your mother if they don't think much of your safety? Hell, move to a haunted house? Eh, cool. But learning that she resembles Anna, f I'll be back in the same day. Although she possibly believes of it as part of her poor mental health and even hallucinogenic mental illness, one evening she tracks sounds to beneath a heavy closet. She finds another secret doorway that appears to have remained closed for an extended period as she peers behind the furnishings. She attempts to shove the closet aside one day out of desperate need, but she fails to do so and is instead assaulted by flies that swarm out from behind it. Renner soon returns and informs the woman of a previously unknown truth. Robert's wife died while delivering birth of their son. Following that, he lost all his mental health and began his small child on a regular basis. Sarah's insanity is easily clinging to all of this knowledge, and she begins to experience images of Robert rushing into her chamber. The woman had also found an accessory belonging to Anna in her bedroom and placed it on her own, feeling awe on the remarkable happenstance of their appearances being so similar. On a single occasion, she seems as though a pair of arms emerge from beneath the mattress in one of the bedrooms to shield her against Robert, who furiously walks towards her, clearly aiming to hurt her. On a different occasion, she witnesses the father's brutal and awful act of pushing himself on a young girl and stays stunned and disgusted. On an additional occasion, she envisions Robert drowning her in the tub when she is bathing with Leah. When her hallucinations pass, no tangible proof of these attacks remains, and the only real-world impact of these occurrences is that they both frighten Liam or render the baby susceptible to extremely hazardous circumstances due to no one going to him. I'm gritting my teeth here. Sarah is losing it. 
And it's not her hallucinations that are making me scared. It's her own well-being that's giving me goosebumps. Girl might have been possessed by Anna. You can't ever tell me otherwise. This same scenario happened in high school short stories that everyone could have read. First of all, that freaking day when she desperately moved the wardrobe is the first sign that Sarah is not in her own mind. Her hallucinations are getting so out of hand that we can't even distinguish which is real. Though I don't think Robert's scenes are mostly a product of her imagination. Other scenes like moving the wardrobe and seeing flies are not distinguishable. A lot of other scenes are nothing but abuse and hard to look at mistreatment. It makes me wonder if it really happened. But what if all of these are Sarah's dreams, you know? It's too much of a cliche that probably that one question on your mind is, is this even real? Or does this happen in real life? Because clearly, no. I'ma shut up if there's been a case exactly like this IRL because one alteration of their choices could have made their lives better. So what if Sarah's still in the hospital in a coma or something that caused her to dream this long freaky thing where he even sees his father? Possible, right? Actually, if we later learned that this is just a dream, I won't even get the slightest shot because it's too predictable. Either way, the solution lies on Sarah's hand because she firstly needs to stay sane. Now do you understand, Sarah? This is what I'm telling you. You shouldn't have gone to the house. You've done nothing to cure your postpartum depression. You are worsening it. Out of all the damn signs, you choose the one out of a hundred to stay and make the most of horror obsession. It's not good for you and the baby. Why can't you and Alex see it? Goodness, just think of your baby, please. They're just giving me migraines from this. <sighs> Leon was once left unattended and was in danger of tumbling over a burning candle, and he almost fell on the stairs to cruelly pump it down, but was stopped just in time. Meanwhile, Sarah finds that tiny objects such as Liam's pacifier as well as an image of the couple's wedding have vanished from the house, indicating that something more evil is going on. She had a snapshot of herself from her previous job as an instructor, which she had suddenly discovered with her own face quickly chopped off. For no apparent reason, she assumed that this as well as the shattered state of her cherished music box toy were the work of her envious husband. Once she questions Alex about it, he doesn't say much. Sarah pulled the sofa one day after detecting the terrible odor of human in the living room and discovered a lot of dirty diapers placed there in a kind of cruel joke. Meanwhile, Alex appears to be working with an odd and creepy farmer in town who requests him to kill an adult pig in his farm who has fathered diseased piglets. After Alex completes the job and understands that it was not the male pig who was sick, his employer instructs him to get rid of the female pig and Alex almost begs the man to put the creature down humanely but the farmer refuses. In addition, the parent has a disagreement over Liam's security. When Alex learns that their boy is on the verge of slipping down a flight of stairs, he thinks that his wife is helpless and incapable of keeping her child safe. Sarah had discovered maggots within the containers of milk kept in their refrigerator for Liam and discarded them, which Alex sees as the harsh mother's behavior of not providing Liam any food unless he agreed to her breastfeeding. But after some time, Alex tries to assist his wife by calling psychiatric experts to their home and then suggesting that Sarah stop breastfeeding for a while and provide the baby with bottled milk. But Sarah strongly objects to such a recommendation, arguing that she only feels close to her baby as if he is her own while nursing him and that she is exhausted from attempting to clarify this to those who want to steal even that fleeting moment out of her. This might be a random question, but why does Sarah never tell her husband about any of her findings and aberrations in the house? It is a bit understandable that her initial impression of such occurrences was that they were part of her psychosis, but beyond a point, it becomes a stretch, much like many other instances spread across the film, like the very convenient placement of a burning candle close to an infant baby waiting for a disaster to happen. Dude, if I'm in Sarah's situation, I would tell my partner immediately right after that moment about the things on my mind. Alex is a very nice guy. He would have understood and he would try to help her. What I'm trying to say is, maybe they should have got a cheaper house or a cottage that is not abandoned instead of getting all creeped out day by day. There are a lot of alternative solutions that they could have done instead of lingering in the house. Both of them are so hard headed about this. First, before you move, make sure to check the house first. Don't get too excited. 
Second, know the history of the house and see if it will be good for you and your family's health. LMAO, if it has a crime history, it shouldn't be sold so casually. Third, don't buy unless you're sure. And unfortunately, Alex and Sarah missed all these steps. Try again next time, I guess. Moving on, I get that Sarah only feels connected to Liam's when she's breastfeeding, but that is not the perfect time to do that. Maybe because of her depression and psychosis that caused Sarah to be too selfish about this matter, but come on Sarah, if I were you, I would only think what's best for the baby. The baby doesn't even know what's going on and you almost got him in an accident. I know this is too frustrating. However, the two of them eventually reconcile and Alex continues to leave his wife by himself to go to his job. And he does something comparable on a particular night near the film's climax after catching a pressing call from an employer. Sarah enters the opening in the wardrobe after sensing Liam's voice from within and she soon discovers herself in an attic-like area with sheets and trash on the ground and dim lights. She instantly noticed the missing toys and pictures from her marriage ceremony and realized they were stolen away by whatever was living within this concealed room or chamber. Soon after, two young lads in their mid-teens emerge from the shades, one of whom is holding infant Liam. She pleads for her baby back, informing the boys that she understands who they are and what occurred to them. Since it is obvious that the two were Robert's kids, who had kept them in prison up inside the space for all time. The kids, on the other hand, told that they have seen her and they didn't want to hand her kid back, claiming that they witnessed her attempting to hurt the child. As Sarah tries to desperately to persuade them that she had no intention of harming the baby, the elder child raises an axe in his grasp, but everything fades to black. We now discovered that the lost items were taken by the mysterious kids in the attic. It is quite obvious that the real reason Renner used to return to the house at night when it was empty was to feed the two boys, who were his own brothers, half-brothers in the stricter sense. Once the family started living in the house, he must have not been able to feed them and they ultimately forced their way out. Whether the two boys are killed by Sarah or not, in the end, is not revealed. Although the switching of the axe and Sarah's protective words fit to be said by a mother desperate to save her child initially does make it seem like she might have killed the two boys. The subtle nod to Renner at the end might also suggest that she lets them live. Whatever be it, there is hardly any sense trying to make meaning out of such. But anyways, if I were Sarah, I wouldn't dare kill the two boys because that only makes me a criminal and a bad mother to Liam. Let's say that they are holding some sort of axe and are threatening my child's life. I'll simply surrender to them. Let them hurt me in any way, but before that, I must blurt out the things I have to say. Hurt me, not my son. Yes, if Sarah was just a little more courageous, she might have saved these kids' life and took them into foster care. I believe that these kids are not morally bad, they're just scared for their lives. As what one saying says, there are no bad kids, only bad parents. Sarah is seen cuddling her newborn son Liam as the sun rises, having overcome her postpartum depression and finally being able to perceive her son as an individual. When Alice gets home, his partner and son are already eating breakfast. The family is back together again, and young Liam can be seen developing into an energetic young man. Renner watches as the three enjoy time in their front garden, and Sarah gives him a knowing gaze. The fact that Sarah is carrying a second child is also revealed. This may sound redundant, but the main lesson here, folks, is to avoid an abandoned property that was involved in murder cases. We can't really judge Sarah and Alex for their life decisions, but it turned out well in the end anyway. But if you are in the shoes of Sarah, what do you think is best to do? I love to see your insights in this popular movie, so please leave your comments below. Booyah!